Hi there. I'm here in Tampa, Florida, where I had the opportunity to sit down and interview Jeffy. Jeffy is 22 years old, he's from Haiti, and he's seen 7,000 house churches, yeah, 7,000 house churches birthed in his nation and the DR. And you don't wanna miss this testimony. It's incredible, it's powerful, uh, it's empowering, it's encouraging. Uh, God is moving in the nations. Jeffy, thank you for joining us. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I've, it's been a joy getting to know you the past few days and just hear your story. And I think it's going to be super encouraging for other people to hear. Me too. So let's start off yeah. with when did you start following Jesus? Um, <laughs> I always laugh when I wanted to share that story because it's just crazy to me. Um, yeah, uh, 2000. I come start following Christ in 2013, but I was. Um, raised by a Christian family, my dad, is, my dad is a pastor, and all of my family or in 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 church, you know, following Christ. But I decided to give my life to Jesus, uh, really uh, knowing that being a pastor's son doesn't make you a believer. Decided to give Christ my life in 2013. Wow! And, wow! Yeah. And was that as a result of someone sharing, or how did that work? Well, I was. I was a drummer back then. Okay. I was used to, they used to call me to play in a okay. big crusade because I was so good wow. at that. Not, yeah. not good anymore. Um, yeah, it was a, a guy that was speaking about um, what does it mean to be a Christian, what does it mean to be a father mm -hmm. of Christ. You've got to take that decision because the Bible tells us if you con it's when you confess that Jesus is your Lord and the Savior, you will be saved. And I, and people thought I was crazy because that know me for since yeah. I was born and a little boy in the community. And now he's crazy. He's giving the life to Jesus. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. so you're doing the church thing, but wow. no relationship no. with the Lord. And no. then age 13, you yeah. make that commitment. We're baptized. Mm -hmm. And then was it, was it, how was the discipleship process from there? Did you start growing um, your faith? Just, um, I didn't, I was not teaching by anybody because yeah. it was um, my dad you was being disciple no yeah was born into you. yeah okay. so my dad was in mean, busy in, in church pointing to other people to the yeah. big crowd so you have time to fully spend with us uh, yeah I think it was more my mom and prayer yeah. time I um, mean me personally reading wow. my Bible and yeah. knowing that the Lord has the Lord has something for me, but I know what wow. it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, sort of kind of self taught in some yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, would love to talk about what you're seeing in Haiti and seven thousand house churches, upwards of fifty thousand people being impacted just through a move of God. That yeah. God's grace has empowered you to to see in that country, in your country. Yeah. Um, so how did that start? I mean, what what did that what uh, was that very first disciple or what what was the beginning of that? Uh, it start uh, because. There's a missionary that come to Haiti, and we were because God called me in ministry, and I didn't know what is it gonna be look like, and God sent a missionary to Haiti, and we wanted to start working together to see you know, plant or you know, plant church and movement in Haiti, but we didn't know what what were we doing because we had no vision, no strategy, and anything like that. Yeah, um, it wasn't working for a period of time. But the Lord uh, gave us a, a connection in the U.S. and come in the U.S. and receive a training from from a network that called No Place Left. It's just a vision to see No Place Left awesome. to preach the gospels, um, and then from different tools that they use and to do that kind of movement. And then we take it back to Haiti. Um, we use what best for the country, and we you know, start multiply in 2015. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember my first disciple was my cousin okay. come to my house and wow. sit in the park and and we shared, and shared Jesus with them right there, and he thought I was joking because we were we were family for a long time, and I never shared wow. anything like that. There, so it was yeah. like you joking right now. I'm telling, I'm not joking. I'm very serious about it. Yeah. And after and by talking more and more and more and more, wow. I take it more serious. Then in the next day, I baptize them and and stuff from there. Wow. Wow. And so from, you know, one group to 7,000 groups, mm -hmm. has it just been exponential growth? Like since then, it's just been yeah, since then like crazy? Yeah, you know, it's been, it's been crazy. Wow. So that the Lord wow. is, is doing in Haiti, so. So what's, uh, what's, what's working? What's, what are you doing that's, that's causing it to see such growth? What, what are some of the strengths? Um, our strength is based on, on God's word. 
Um, and we and we have a say that's everything that we're doing. We wanna we wanna do it simple, yeah, biblical and reproducible. Yeah. So everything that we don't want to make it simple for the people, for the community, it has to be biblical because you don't want to do anything without against the word of God. Yeah. And we want it to be reproducible so that everything that I teach somebody, that person needs to be able to turn to teach it to the next person. Yeah. Like Second Timothy two two, like Paul was saying that to Timothy. Yeah. So yeah, this is working a lot wow. among us. Um it's with the, the unity and the love that we have for one another. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and so, but the, the impact of what you're seeing, you aren't, you don't know everyone that's being impacted by this, correct? No. It, it's, it's out of your control. Yes. How, tell me how, what that looks like. Because uh, in my mind, you have a church and you, they're all in one building or in the one space or you have all their contact info. So what does it look like? No. You? So we, when we first, when we take that training back to Haiti, we were trying to work among pastors like that already have a church have a church building because we know that these or these are God people that will take the good news to, to Haiti first of okay, all and yeah. to the nations um did it, we see that for a lot of reason that we won't have time to talk about but later on when we start with our, my cousin first and other unbelievers in the community and they start multiplying and the pastors are seeing what's going on and they come to us and I saw the training and then it was 10 of them. So as we going through the training and days after days, month after month, so some of them left and then we got stuck with seven of them and these guys were the one that leading the movement and not yeah. me. So I will spend time with seven guys and they're the one that carrying the message and the good news to their own community out of Haiti. We were, um, in only two districts in Haiti, there's seven more of them to okay. go to. Wow. So we still got a lot of place left. Yes. So Wow. So we're praying. And you're talking about even just looking at different methods and realizing if we want to reach all of Haiti, mm-hmm. we're we're not gonna be able to do church no. the traditional way that maybe has worked yeah. in that. The reason why is is because we come up with the uh uh research that we call the brutal fact. The brutal fact exactly is is just taking you to to see your population, so many people that you have in your country. Um, so Haiti is 11 million people. Yeah. So well, the, the research that we made is it's only 2% of them that are following Christ. It's 2 million people. Wow. The 10 million are, are lost. Wow. But it's getting more every yeah. day. So we wanted to reach the 2% of the peop- of the Haitian population, which is 100,000 people. Yeah. But for each Harvard church in Haiti, you will need 50,000 people for each one. Wow. To buy land and build the building. Yeah. That's without paying the pastor to right. do the work. Yeah. So you still need 50,000 people just for construction. Yeah. And when we realized that $50,000 US per church, we need 100,000. So that's about almost a billion dollars wow. so there's wow. no way so you did the math and you said yes, we can't there's use no way we, we can't come coming up with that kind of money right it has to be another way wow because we want to reach the Haitian population and then through prayer and then the Lord take us back to the old ways to how it was it in the Bible what is the example that we see yeah. that Jesus left for us yeah. and not only Jesus but his disciples left yeah. for us and then we adopt that we wow. we follow that principle that example that we see from the word of god and then that's how we multiply that's awesome. that's the discipleship church. movement yes. yeah it. um i love that story you share share the story about being on the bus and hearing people talk about yeah um it's funny i was uh, i was on a trip um going to visit one of our churches and i was in the bus and there was two young woman that's sitting in my back that was just talking about um, one of our training that we did yeah. and that they love all of it was just explained to one another this is what I love about it and blah 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 and then I sit in front of them Yeah. but then I realized later it was one of on our generation of churches that were talking about our training and what wow. they learned yeah. in the meeting that wow. we have so but- you weren't. You didn't train them. They, no. Someone you had trained had trained someone else. Yep. Who had trained them. Yep. And they were talking about it. Yep. You guys were relationally yep. disconnected. They, yeah. They don't know. They were still getting the they same. They don't tools. know I am. But yeah, I even left the bus without telling them that who I am. Yeah. So, wow. So cool. Yeah. So encouraging. 
Um, so we talked a little bit about about kind of the breadth of the movement, what God's doing across in Haiti. Um, what are weaknesses that you, you see currently with? Um, the biggest weaknesses that we we find in our community in Haiti with the movement and the churches that we have is that our people, especially our leader, the biggest witness for them is they're not able to read mm-hmm. or write something. Mm-hmm. So, but but the majority of the training that we do is always more oral so that they okay. can learn and keep for them. So this is the because we have a, a church gathering where uh, it's happened on the Sunday morning because the leader of the church cannot read his son le- read the Bible for him. But they wow. some go to school during the during the week. Interesting. So we have to meet the church on Sunday so that yeah. the son can be there to read the Bible for his okay. dad. Wow. So that the people will. Wow. So yeah, because so you're working primarily rural, yeah. poor communities yeah. across Haiti. Yeah. And yeah, then I imagine that would be a yeah. challenge. Um, what's your focus day to day? What does your week look like? Um. My focus and more every day what I do. It's a normal day when I wake up, spend time with Jesus first in the morning. Um, never forget my abiding yeah. um, ways. I need to really connect it to Jesus. Um, and then it's more about travel to to the community or to different places in Haiti or to the Dominican Republic or have a meeting or have a training going on. It's always be in the Word with somebody about how we can multiply people and church and in, in, in the movement how we can yeah. how we can have we can see more people come to Christ in Haiti every wow. day so this wow. is the idea and the focus like yeah. I told you we have seven other districts that we need to work with mm-hmm. so we're still planning on how are we going to do it because there's still yeah. place left yeah to preach the gospel would in you Haiti. say you get, you're part of like an eldership team or what do you call kind of your, your leadership team um we just call it like a team. Okay. Okay. Um, How many people are on that? Seven team? of them. Okay. So seven. seven of them, and so you would be eight. Or, yeah. Yeah. So the kind of eight of you are overseeing this movement, mm-hmm. and you see it as your job to kind of pour into them, yeah. disciple them, yeah. train them. Yeah. Um, and go to see the movement. Um, they are, they are, all, they are, I call them Generation Zero because they meet with me. Yeah. Um, but the people that they are pouring into, I call them Generation One. So I met with Generation Zero. Sometimes I visit the Generation One okay. in the meeting, okay. what they do and how they... And you're talking about generations of discipleship. Mm-hmm. Paul pours into Timothy, yep. pours into faithful men. Yep. Other. Yep. So you know, the Bible talks about the, those four generations yep. of discipleship. How deep is the discipleship in, in your movement? So right now we are tracking all the way to 17 generations of 17? Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. That's encouraging. That's all, that's all we can track into. Yeah. Because... I mean, it was 7,000 churches. I really can't tell. There's more than that. Because there's a story that uh, one of our leaders come to us one day and telling us that they, they, they were thinking of going to a place that they know way up to the mountain that they think that nobody have ever go there to share the gospel. And they actually take a team to go over there. But when they get over there, it was like by a well. And they just find a gathering of a group of people. They thought it was just uh, simple people just sitting down and talk mm. or do voodoo stuff like ceremony for the thing. Wow. But when they get closer and they were hearing what they were, what they were saying, and they were they were in Haiti, we speak that they, they say, we said that they were speaking our language. So when they said when we said they were speaking our language, is that they were t- saying the same thing. They have the same training. Wow. They have the wow. same idea. Yeah. So when the pastor, the head pastor, sit down and trying to figure out what's going on, and he find out this is a fourth generation of his church. Really. That he knows of. Yeah. But he never got the chance to meet them. Wow. So he thought there was nobody going over there, but it's yeah. his generation of churches. It, it has churches. spread. It has spread. spread. So wow. the, the gospel even get there faster than even he could get he there. He could get there. Wow. Yeah. So tell me about the, the, we were talking about discipleship earlier and how you don't want to just do behavior modification, but you really want to walk with people through discipleship. Yeah. And it's it's messy, I, yeah. I imagine. Describe yeah. that process a yeah. little bit. Um, discipleship, it's, it's messy. And it's like... Uh, uh, how do I explain that? Um, it's like when you have a it's, it's you can see that it's very dirty. Mm-hmm. 
but to clean it you have to go on the top of it mm. so that you can pour clean water so that they can flow all the way down yeah. so we have a lot of cases where people you know in our churches in our movement um they leave their life um because they're first, they just come to Christ. Yeah. They still have the same attitude. They still drink, smoking, and they have all kind of stuff that they're still doing. Yeah. But we we remember that the the church in Corinth that are very messy. But Paul yeah. called read a letter and said to the church of God. Mm. So even if it's messy, they're still God's people, and God will take care of them. So we. Absolutely. We actually spend spend time with those people. Yeah. We don't just wanna expect that they will change after they come to Christ, but we actually walk with them through that process and to make them a better person every day. Yeah. And it it it, it we it actually happened through relationship with one another. Yeah. Wow. So encouraging. Uh, so what's next? Take me into the future, next year, next uh, five years. What are you looking yeah, forward so to? Yeah. So next, the next step for us is still working in Haiti. Um, we have seven other district that, like I told you, we still need to work with. Um, we have some leader that we're trying to raise to send um, to as as missionary inside of Haiti to other places in Haiti. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we have our movement that was spreading geographically to the Dominican Republic, the Dominican Republic. So we are you know, thinking of, of put some more gasoline on that new flame. Mm-hmm. Oh, fire just just started. Yeah. So wow. we were working with two different countries right now. Okay. The Dominican so continuing Republic. to expand in Haiti, but then also Otos. crossing the border yes. to the DR yeah. and doing work Keep there. Going. Yeah. yeah. This is the, encouraging. The, wow. The, yeah. This is great stuff. Um, if you had to say one thing to the church in America, church leaders here in America, <laughs> young people in America who want to see this nation change, uh, what, what would your advice be? If we want to see not only this nation change I believe that everybody have a heart for not only one nation but every nation yeah um, because the the Grand Commission is is for all nations and and Jesus himself on Acts 1 8 said you will be my witness in Jerusalem Judea summer until the end of this earth so we believe that we're going all over the place to share the love of Jesus but to do that um, there is on the only example that we need it's already in the bible the only advice that i have for them is to read god's word and actually ask the question what is what does it look like to be a church from god's perspective not human being is that not what people think is that what what the training said is not what the material that they have but it's what we've seen as example that the lord is giving us and his disciples have left for us in the word, in the Bible. I think we, we have everything that we need right here, right there in the Bible. So this is my advice is to read the word and pray to God. And I think he will show you exactly mm. what he wants us to do. Amen. 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 Jeffy, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, brother. Powerful. Thank you.